Susan, you mentioned the labor shortage. Um, we've been hearing that there is a gap, there's not enough construction workers, people in manufacturing. Should the government actually implement programs that target those specific areas, or is that too short term? What do you think? I think they need to look at the short term and the long term. The government is has announced something. In fact, we've all been watching commercials on this Canada Jobs Grant, and then there's actually a little fine print, there's a little asterisk, and it's like the back at the end of a pharmaceutical uh, commercial that may cause adverse reactions on things. The, the government needs to work with the provinces, look at the gaps where this, the, the um, look at the gaps where the, in certain skills in certain sectors, then they need to find a way to most effectively put people in those jobs. And that can be young people too, it can be First Nations people too, it can be people with disabilities. The provinces are already doing that. The federal government gives them some money to do that right now. They're trying to take that away and start up something brand new called the Canada Jobs Grant instead of expanding the programs that already exist. So I think there's an opportunity for even more cooperation at the federal provincial level, maybe not by inventing something brand new, maybe by expanding something that exists already. What's uh, happening right now, um, business leaders are telling everyone is not working actually generally. Now I'm not saying nothing works but the, the, the skills training sort of uh, you know structure which is universities and colleges trying to trying to train people getting money from um, from from the provincial governments that gets sent to them by the federal government generally isn't working. Now we might not th all think that the Canada Job Grant which is essentially a way to pay directly to people for their own training so that whether if they want to go to Fort McMurray and they want to learn to be sort of a millwright and they get up to I think 15, 10 or fifteen thousand dollars paid directly. They have for to them. pay. They, they have Their to pay employer and pays reimbursed. and the province or the federal government right. pays. Now there's plenty of employers that are saying that that's the right way. Now there's lots of different ideas here. I'm not saying, but what's happening right now is not working. Now feds have put out a, a, an idea that is more of a direct payment to individuals. The provinces don't agree, obviously, because but and small businesses have to participate in that. And yeah. you said we are each a small business. I don't have $5,000 per every new employee. I would love to hire lots of young people, but under the terms of the Canada Jobs Grant, you're asking me to put $5,000 for each employee forward on the skill set, okay. and that's difficult. Let's just bring this back to uh, the labor gap, if there is one. Should we be, you know, there are all these people who don't have jobs, and apparently there are all these jobs that need people. Yeah. What should we do about that? Well, we have a, a skills gap in certain regions of the country, and we still have a massive um, employment, uh, unemployment problem. So that's a, an odd dichotomy to have to analyze. So we have not enough jobs, and we don't have enough people for some of the jobs that we have. Uh, the role of government in all of this is the great equalizer in that we need to at least ensure that young Canadians growing up have access to education, whether that be a university degree, uh, a, um, a college degree, a trade school, or and apprenticeship programs that help bridge that gap. So where the government should be investing its money is increasing access to those programs. So that's why working with the provinces on lowering tuition, whether that be for a college, trade school, or a university. In terms of the specific skills shortages, uh, I think that programs that allow for apprenticeships and bridging from those schools to jobs are important, but I don't think the government can be into the free market and start picking uh, winners and losers in terms of the, the jobs that they should be investing in. I think that the um, corporations that are sitting on record profits right now need to invest those in those skills. But we are, I mean, just to go back to your point, um, Jason, on the labor shortage, the government is actually using immigration as a way of solving that. Yeah, I mean, w listen, I, I think this, you know, what we're coming, we're, we're, the economy of Canada has changed a lot in the last little bit, and, and we've all heard stories about Saskatchewan and Alberta, for example, and even Newfoundland, for example, being, rather than um, difficult places to find a job, places where they can't find enough people for jobs. And so I think that, you know, we're going through a big transition here in terms of our national economy has changed a little bit in the last little bit, and I think governments generally are struggling with make, f having the people, generally population centers in Ontario and Quebec, find the jobs which increasingly are in other areas of the country. So we're going through this big sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of an all pain in, or some pain in the, in the short term. But I think there is room for being specific about the needs, being specific about the solutions and trying to get the people there. Um, I think that there is some room for that.